we're going to be applying instant electric torque to this presentation. So number one, to get it out of the way here, uh, this is, uh, if you're not familiar with EV World, been online since 1998, uh, one of the most uh, widely read uh, publications and probably one of the longest in existence devoted to electric vehicle technology. I'm pleased to say that we have uh, begun to introduce what I call an iMag version, which is a PDF-based um, full-color magazine uh, for iPads and things like that that uh, I have a lot of fun putting together. And you can find out more. I'm going to be talking about P cubed or P3 today. Product, power, and personal issues dealing with it. Okay, number one, pro products. So what are the products that are out there? First, a real quick history. Electric cars have been around for a long, long time. They've been around for well over 100 years. Thomas Edison riding in a Bay 1910 Bailey electric car. Uh, he provided, his company, Edison Electric, provided the batteries for this particular vehicle. Of course, with the introduction 100 years ago this year of the electric starter by Professor Kettering, suddenly uh, electric cars became... Uh, not as convenient, or, or I should put it the other way, gasoline cars became more convenient because you didn't have to get out there and break your arm cranking it. You could just simply push a button, the car would start. The early starting issues with the uh, gasoline car went away. So by the late 1930s, the last of electric cars, which interestingly happened to be the longest lasting segment happened to be in logistics, electric trucks. They were still making electric trucks. In fact, this is an antique 1938 electric truck built by a British company uh, taking part in one of the recent parades over in, uh, in London, still working. The idea of hybrids, not new. This is a Ferdinand Porsche Loscia um, uh, Lorne vehicle. This is a, interestingly, not only is it a electric hybrid vehicle that uses electric hub motors. We thought all this was new technology. Nah, it's been around a long time. Hybrids uh, are not new to companies like General Motors. This is a 1969 uh, hybrid electric concept vehicle called the XP883. What's interesting about it, its powertrain was um, a uh, Stirling engine that they had incorporated into it in 1969. Of course, by 1990, we had the uh, remarkable EV1, probably still one of my favorite electric cars of all times. It's still, in, you know, here it is 20 years later, it's still an elegant, uh, elegant automobile. And I wish they were, you know, still around and available. But, of course, that's history and spilled milk, unfortunately. Those cars led to, not only was the EV1, an outgrowth of the 1990s, uh, uh, zero emission mandate uh, in uh, California. You had a whole host of them. Vehicles like the Honda uh, Plus. You had Ford thinking about electric cars, and that is a pun on, on words. Uh, that is the uh, Ford. It actually was a comp Nordic company that went bankrupt. Ford bought them, uh, did, a, did a redesign on them. Uh, it, looks, it looks a lot different than it does today. And of course, since Ford bought them, they've been bankrupt at least three other times. So whether they'll ever hit the market, I don't know. Uh, this is Nissan's uh, early, uh, one of their early attempts at an electric car. This is the Hyper Mini. Remember this car, it will come back to it later. So what happened? We had all these electric cars running around California, some of them up in Georgia with Georgia Power, some of them here with Florida Power and Light. Um, so what happened to them? Well, as some of you actually in this room still own them. There are still a few of them out there, some with dead batteries, uh, but uh, some still running quite well. So what happened? Here's what happened. Why didn't they take off back then? It's not what didn't happen. It's more like I should say what didn't happen. Here's the price of oil. Look how stable that sucker's been for the last 30 years. You know, cheap oil. Who wants to buy an electric car? It gets even better. Here's another way of looking at it. Look what the price of oil in real dollars has done over the last 20 years. It's gone down. Now we've had all these peaks and hikes, you know, spikes and peaks I should say, but it's, co it's consistently gone down over time. And what was the result of that? Well, cheap oil and a huge market potential to sell SUVs at incredible profits resulted in that, the crushing of all those lovely EV1 electric cars. There was, like the TV reality TV show, there was a sole survivor. <laughs> not, not including the Rangers, of course, there's some of those out there, but uh, you know, the 
we had the little uh, Toyota RAV4 EV, still those cars running around. Guys have them, 140,000 miles on their nickel metal hydride batteries. Um, it's, you know, it's a remarkable car. So now let's jump forward to 2012, and guess what we're going to see again? Son of RAV4. <laughs> The son of the sole survivor, the son of sole survivor, the RAV4. This car is going to be coming out uh, this year, and it will be available to consumers. No idea at this point, unless Jim's heard differently on uh, on pricing. Of course, the technology in that RAV4 did not come from Toyota. The technology in that RAV4 came from our friends at Tesla, and so the whole sort of rebirth again. Uh, of the electric car, and I don't want to call it a bubble, but it, uh, sometimes I'm tempted to call it a bubble, uh, is the give birth with Tesla, who, by the way, has just done a deal. They're going to be providing powertrains to a Mercedes electric car besides their own. And of course, here's the progenitors of the Tesla. I happen, this is the synchronicities of life. I'm having lunch with Felix Kramer at Bucks in, uh, in Woodland, Wood, uh, Wood, Redwood? Redwood, California. Famous restaurant where all the Silicon Valleys get together over lunch. Who do we run into? Yep, the founders, Mark Teppering and uh, um, and uh, Mar Martin Eberhardt. So I, of course, had to sit down with them and have my you know my picture taken with them. Now, as if you know the story here, eventually Elon Musk, you know, shouldered them out and and they're not there. But not before Martin got his revenge. This is my, I got the license plate on Martin's car as it was parked outside of, uh, outside of Buck's restaurant. So the guys that became the two competitors, the two jousting Mac clients here, was Elon Musk, right, the young pup, and uh, our, our good friend uh, Bob Lutz, uh, the, uh, the old dog, right, from uh, Detroit. It was because Elon Musk and the guys at Tesla invent and, and, and sort of rebirthed the electric car concept with a really cool electric car that stirred a lot of interest back in 2004-2005. That Bob Lutz said, well, pardon my French, dang it. If, if, <laughs> if, if this little startup of a bunch of guys who know nothing about cars can be successful, then why in the world can't we have one at General Motors? So eventually what resulted, of course, was the, 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 the brick. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. This is the Volt, the original concept of the Volt. As soon as we all saw this, I thought, they finally got it. GM finally got it. We got a sexy, hard, you know, really sort of uh, uh, adrenaline-stimulating electric car that people can't look at and say it's a wuss, right? Except the problem was is that when they put this thing in the wind tunnel, Bob told me this, when we put it in the wind tunnel, it actually had lower drag resistance if it went backward <laughs> than when it went forward. So that's why it eventually then evolved into the car you see out there. Because they put it in the wind tunnel and began to find, well, you know, it's an electric car, it really needs to be efficient. And while we'd love it to be this muscular, powerful thing, we, we want people to get that 40 miles in electric range. And to do that, we had to tweak it. And believe me, they tweaked and tweaked and tweaked. They spent more time in the wind tunnel on this than any other car they've ever developed. Okay, so remember the cute little, the little Hyper Mini? I love this car. This was a great little car. That evolved into this, the leaf. So we went from the bud to the leaf, and of course you can see the leaf outside. Um, at that also then, uh, about the same time the leaf being developed, the uh, people at Mitsubishi developed this little car called the I, and it was a little 600cc gasoline car engine for the Japanese market with the engine back under the rear sort of cargo deck. And somebody at Mitsubishi at some point said, why don't we stick an electric motor back there? And they did, and that's the car that we now see outside. And it's really a great little car. Uh, first chance I had to drive it was, uh, it was at the Tokyo Auto Show. Okay, so what's for sale today? Right, here's some of the pricing I, uh, that's available in the vehicles. The uh, Chevrolet Volt, Mitsubishi I, so anything ranging from around uh, $40,000 on down to uh, just under $30,000 not including tax credits, as I try to explain to people. Uh, most people that can afford these cars do have tax liability. Uh, I don't have any tax liability to speak of, so I can't afford the car, so. And if you really want something hot, we got the Fisker out there, which is just absolutely the most drop-dead 
gorgeous automobile out there. And then of course we have the Tesla. They are delivering this car to a few people once they get some other issues and bugs and things worked out. But they're delivering those cars, the Model S, uh, sometime later this year. If you can't, if you don't want to buy a car, then certainly you can lease them. Here's some of the vehicles that are available for lease. Electrics, the smart electric car. Uh, this one just newly came out. This is the called the BMW Active E. They're just now beginning to lease these cars within about the last four weeks. Um, and uh, that it, they've, it's interesting, interesting car. People really like it. Uh, if you are looking for something completely different, you can also lease if you are in a market where hydrogen is readily available, which probably is only Southern California, LA market generally at this point. Uh, you can lease the, uh, uh, the Honda Clarity fuel cell vehicle, which for all intents and practical purposes is just like a gasoline car in terms of range and all those issues. You just have to have you know, some place to refuel it with hydrogen. Uh, Mercedes is also leasing a uh, electric car. These are all limited number cars, and I've got you got to see the prices up there. Okay, what's coming soon? Of course, the big one we're all waiting for, I think, with some excitement, is the uh, Ford uh, Focus Electric, which should be coming out here again this spring. Toyota plug-in hybrid that so should be available again here, probably starting next month or shortly thereafter. All these cars again available for lease and, or sale. Um, and uh, this is the uh, Honda, we already talked about the uh, RAV4, the Honda, I call this the Honda Relents because for the longest time Honda said, nah, batteries aren't ready, batteries aren't ready, we're not going to do it, batteries aren't ready, we're happy with our hybrid uh, IMA drive, and then suddenly uh, last year, oh yeah, we're going to build electric cars. And uh, so here it is, uh, this is the successor to the EV Plus that we saw earlier. There is a one journal referred to as the uh, Chinese Trojan horse, the Coda, which will start to be available, I think, starting, this is what, 20, uh, so I think starting later, ne like next week or something. Here, in a, very shortly, uh, the Coda electric car, which is built in China and then brought here and then some additional manufacturing done to upgrade the car.